Good morning church. If you're able to watch right now, it's good to see you. And I'm just make, making sure the sound and things are working as they should be. So give me a second. Um, so happy 2021. It's good to know that there's a new year and new opportunities. And I'm still in a kind of holiday mode. So um, it's good to see you. But I'm probably a bit uh, lazy at the moment. I've been doing lots of walks with my dogs and having lots of fun and just give me a second while I concentrate on this there he is you can see that there are people there welcome Irene welcome Guy welcome the Sipo um, Sorry folks. There we go. Seems to be working. Okay. Now I'm going to work out how to turn this off. I invite you to join me with our opening prayer as you join me with the words in yellow. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Loving God, we have come to worship you. Help us to remember that you are here with us. May we pray to you in faith. Sing your praise with gratitude and listen to your word with eagerness through Christ our Lord. Amen. So this coming... Uh, I think it's Tuesday would be Epiphany and we uh, would remember the coming of the three kings and so we sing We Three Kings of Orient oh. We three kings of Orient are Bearing gifts we traverse afar Field and fountain moor and mountain Following yonder star, oh, oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright. West with thee, things still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Born a king. On Bethlehem's place, gold I bring to crown him again. Ding forever, ceasing never over us all to reign. Oh, oh, oh star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward lead. Still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect life. Frankincense to offer I have, incense owns a deity night. Prayer and praising all men, raising worship in God on high. Oh, Star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, west with leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Myrrh is mine, its bitter perfume breathes a life of gathering. Sorrowing, sighing, bleeding, dying, sealed in a storm, cold tomb. Oh, star of wonder, 
star of night, star with royal beauty bright, west with leading still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Glorious now, behold him arise, King and glory sacrifice. Hallelujah sounds through the earth and skies. Oh, 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 star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, west with leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy We pray, loving Lord Jesus, as we come to praise you and worship you, we come also to confess for the right roads we avoided traveling, and the kindly words we refused to share, for the false gods who received our worship, and the true selves we have starved of love. God, by your grace, forgive for us. Give. For the hidden hurts we have held too tightly, and the promises which we never kept, for the careless use of our time and money and the lame excuses we should never have made. God, by your grace, forgive, forgive us. us. For all we should be and all we can amend, God, in your love, renew yes. us. For all you have in store for us and all you may demand of us, God, in your love, prepare yes. us. For the life of the world and the love of your people. God, in your love, commit us. us. Hear and believe these words of Jesus. Our sins are forgiven. Go in peace. Come and follow me, he says. Glory to the Creator who gives us life. Glory to Jesus, whose love remakes us. Glory to the Spirit, companion on our journey. Glory be to God. Amen. We pray together as Jesus has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we think of those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. We read from Matthew chapter 2, from verse 1 to 12, from the story of the wise men arriving to see Jesus. I press the buttons. Okay. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, a Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has born, been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all of the chief people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, For well, this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. Uh, if there was a bump, that was a dog lying down on my tripod. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. And they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. 
and having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, to return to their country by another route. Amen. Thanks be to God for his word to us. And so this morning we remember those three wise men and how they came to Jesus. And I've just got a short reflection on that for us today. Uh, now if there's a crunching sound, there's a dog chewing his hoof below me. So that's how it happens here. We have to keep the dogs inside while they go outside and bark. And then all your dogs will bark at home if you have any. Uh, try and find my buttons here. Okay. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, we pray. Amen. Often when we have our, our picture of the nativity scene, we imagine the three wise men and the shepherds and baby Jesus and Joseph and everybody and Mary all standing around. But in actual fact, the wise men arrived late. They came only after Jesus had been born, and I'm sure the shepherds had already gone home by then. But the thing that we notice is that the wise men came as a bit of a surprise to Herod and the people of Jerusalem. In verse 2 of Matthew chapter 2, we read them asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star rising at its rising and have come to pay him homage. But Herod and all Jerusalem were thrown into terror. They were frightened because they heard this news, because they knew, I think, in their hearts that what they had been doing was not compatible with the faith of Israel. Herod was running the religion, building this great big temple, along with building temples to Caesar and other gods in all of, all of Israel to appease the masses as a way of controlling the people, a way of making sure that he remained king and nobody else could. When Herod heard the news that, that a new king was born, a new Messiah was born, I imagine it's a bit like being the CEO of some company and then finding some decorators come to measure your office for new furniture for a new CEO or something like that. You're about to lose your job. You're about to be replaced by somebody else. And I think this is an interesting part of, of what's happening here. Is the foreign wise men from far away come and want to celebrate the birth of a king. Meanwhile, the people of Jerusalem, people like Herod, I'm not even interested at all. We don't realize what we've got until somebody from outside comes to, to have a look and remind us. Sometimes you might feel that your house is maybe too small or too messy or too fallen down. When somebody comes to visit, who says, wow, I've never seen such a beautiful house. And wow, this is such a beautiful place. I, I don't understand how you live in such a huge building. Then you realize that you've got something. And you realize that you need to appreciate what you have. The wise men come from the east to celebrate the birth of a king and to celebrate the hope that this new king will bring. But Jerusalem and Herod are too busy with their religion and their politics to notice that he has come. In John chapter 1 verse 11 we read, He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. And so, remembering that the shepherds came first and the wise men came later on, perhaps we need to see these two responses. The wise men, they, they uh, not the wise men, the shepherds, they're in the field, they're desperate for the good news of God, they're waiting for, for good news to come, and they get to see the angels, and they rush down, I think of the, the line of the hymn, see the shepherds hurry down to Bethlehem, as they go down to see this child who's been born, and they remember the hope that he brings and what he's going to do for them. On the other hand, you have the scholarly, political, wise men or kings who search the scriptures and study the issues of the day. But the problem with the birth of a king for people like this is that he takes away their authority, in a sense. He usurps their place. Herod doesn't want somebody to come and take away his job. The wise men are quite pleased because they come from far away and they're looking forward to the restoration of the kingdom of Israel and hoping that this Davidic king will be one who brings peace, the one who helps them to defeat Rome, etc. But Herod's life is dependent on Rome's authority. Herod has grown accustomed to the way things are. So the wise men, King Herod, etc., 
they don't get the choir of angels. Or maybe if they had been waiting for the Messiah to come, they would have. Maybe if they had been waiting for the Messiah to come, they would have noticed that in the sky above them were choirs of angels singing, there's a king born today, a king who's to bring peace, a king who's to bring change. The reality is that we're sometimes too stubborn to hear what God is saying. We're too stubborn to listen to the voice of God reminding us of this message of generosity and kindness and love. We're too busy with our lives the way they are, complaining about what we don't have, complaining about what we have, to notice that God is at work amongst us. These wise men from far away, they're waiting for God to put the world to rights. And they've been studying the Hebrew scriptures along with all the scriptures of the world. And they notice things like Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, For a child will be born to us, the son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And they recognize that there's an opportunity for somebody like that to become king of all the world. They read in Isaiah 11 verse 12, And he shall set up a banner for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. And even 53 verse 5, he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. The Hebrews had these scriptures, and they could pay attention to what they were saying and receive what God was saying to them about the promise of healing and hope and new life, that they were so consumed by what was going on around them, by Herod's power and their alliances with Rome. The wise men didn't know where Jesus would be born. So they asked about this, and the scribes of... Just leave him there, my love. He's chewing the wires. Oh, yeah. uh, my dog is now chewing my microphone wire. And he bites straight through wires, if you give him half a chance. Excuse me for a sec. To your mind. <laughs> yeah, this is much more interesting than a wire. Lost my place. <laughs> the scribes told him that that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem. And so they go there and Herod asks them to report back, but we know what uh, Herod's up to. He wants them to <laughs> He wants them to to come back to him so that he can make sure that he gets rid of the child who's been born. We're rescuing my wires from the dog again. He shouldn't chew through the tripod before the service. Okay guys, just leave him there and chew that, that's fine. <laughs> oh, that was distracting. Anyways, so Herod is, is kind of comically evil. Can you imagine trying to get rid of God's plan? Can you imagine sort of going out and out to, to kill the one who's going to be the one to bring peace to the world? Because it suits you to be the one in power. It suits you to be the one who's got everything. And the, the shepherds, I guess, are, are kind of, on the other hand, an extreme of, of goodness and hopefulness, waiting for, for God to come. And the wise men are those seeking for something to happen seeking for change. We find in ourselves these three aspects of our personality. There's the wise person, wise man part that, that searches for the good news of hope, that waits for it to come. But then we can choose to receive it like shepherds who hear angels singing and who respond with enthusiasm and who run down to the, to the manger to see this Jesus born and to say, this is our hope, this is a new beginning, this is something great. On the other hand, now the dog is lying on its back and knocking the whole tripod over. Dumpy, come here. Uh, you're a very faithful dog. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I must say, I should bring my dogs to church when it comes again. Anyway, you've got those three examples. The wise men, who look for the good news, who wait for it. 
We've got the shepherds who rush to hear what God is saying, to see what God is doing. And then we've got... <laughs> just give him a biscuit. We'll run outside with him. <laughs> Dog, you're ruining my conclusion. Wise men, shepherds, and Herod. The shepherds enthusiastically receive the message. The wise men look for it. But Herod knows what the message is and, and, and refuses to hear it. In fact, he tries to destroy it. And all of these three things are working in us at all times. The cautious, the destructive, and the hopeful. And in this new year, I pray that we would emphasize the hopeful and the searching. And that we would see those things in us that try to destroy what God is doing. We would see those things in us that look for the hope of what God is doing. And like those wise men, we would go and do what we are called to do. We read also in the scripture that the wise men journeyed back by a different way. They had changed their allegiances. And in the poem by T.S. Eliot of our Journey of the Magi, it ends this. Were we led all that way for birth or death? There was a birth, certainly. We had evidence and no doubt. I had seen birth and death, but had thought they were different. This birth was hard and bitter agony for us, like death, our death. We returned to our places, these kingdoms, but no longer at ease here in the old dispensation, with an alien people clutching their gods. I should be glad of another death. The importance of dying to ourselves and coming alive to God. And so we close by singing, uh, Make Room in Your Heart, a contemporary Christmas carol. A family hiding from the storm Found no place at the keeper's door it was for this a child was born To save a world so cold and hollow The sleeping town they did not know The lying in a manger alone The Savior King had no hope has come to heal our sorrow is there room in your heart is there room in your heart is there room in your heart for God to write his story shepherds counting sheep at night do not fear the glory lies. You are precious in His sight. God has come to raise the lowly. You can come as you are. It may set you apart when you make room in God bless us with discomfort and easy answers. 
half-truths and superficial relationships so that we may live deep within our hearts. May God bless us with anger at injustice, oppression and exploitation of people so that we may work for justice, freedom and peace. May God bless us with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, hunger and war, so that we may reach out our hands to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. And may God bless us with enough foolishness to believe that we can make a difference in this world, so that we can do what others claim cannot be done, to bring justice and kindness to all our children and the poor. Amen. Amen. May God bless you today and in this new year, and may you be strengthened with His presence. And may you cho choose the hopeful way of the shepherds to come to see Jesus born, the hopeful way of the wise men to come to see Him, and the hopeful way of the wise men who choose a different path home, who choose to live the way of God, the way of peace, instead of the way of Herod, who tries to upset the things that God is busy doing. Amen. God bless you.